Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. The latest case of global financial craziness is taking place in Cyprus. Now joining us to talk about the situation there is Kostas Lepovitsas. He's a professor of economics at the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London. He's a member of Research on Money and Finance, and he's a regular columnist for The Guardian. Thanks for joining us again, Kostas. So this, uh, before we get into the specifics of the back and forth between the uh, European Central Bank and Cyprus and all of this, just to give us some context of the uh, Cypriot economy, am I missing something or is the major a big piece of the Cypriot economy parking money for Russian billionaires, some people say laundering money for Russian billionaires, I mean, is, is this at, at the heart of what the crisis is about? Uh, in part. Basically, Cyprus has followed the development path uh, that was unsustainable and quite simply mad. Um, it, it's gone for becoming a, a, an international financial center, which in the context of Cyprus has meant uh, attracting deposits from uh, across the world on very few questions asked. And therefore, some of these deposits are of uh, very shady provenance. So C Cyprus has done all that. And on the basis of this um, collecting of money, the banks in Cyprus have become uh, simply enormous relative to, um, uh, to the economy. The banks have invested um, heavily um, in Greece uh, and elsewhere, and they've engaged in um, uh, property lending uh, on the island, which has created a local uh, bubble of quite uh, some size. Um, that's, uh, that's, the, that's the banking side. The real economy, meanwhile, in Cyprus has gone from bad to worse. It's been losing competitiveness within the euro, and the, it's not been functioning very well at all, um, creating huge um, deficits and uh, generally inability to um, compete internationally. Okay, so let me just ask one all, question. Why, why, all in all, it's a disaster. So why, why apparently the Russian billionaires have a third to a half of the... Uh, deposits in the, in the Cypriot banks, according to the BBC. I mean, why, why are they parking their money there? Is it gets them inside the uh, EU? Very low tax. No questions asked. So it's, it, it essentially, uh, 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 you know, the, the place where operates as, uh, uh, you know, as a, as a center for uh, legalizing money or moving money away from the uh, eyes of the authorities um, elsewhere. But, and, it's not, but it's not like the Russian authorities are so uh, rigorous, are they? It's true, but some of the money that uh, ends up in Cyprus is perhaps uh, not uh, uh, of a province that they would like to admit in Russia uh, itself. Russia in, any, in, in Russia, in any case, has been leaking money left, right and center uh, for a long time, and one of the places where it's been leaking money to is Cyprus. Cyprus, in that respect, is not that unusual to other places in Europe, such as Luxembourg, such as uh, the city of London, incidentally, which is uh, uh, one of the places uh, of choice for Russian oligarchs uh, to move their money, although very far, very far fewer questions are asked about the city of London compared to Cyprus. Cyprus has moved into this um, game uh, and chose to structure its economy uh, on this basis. It was a terrible decision. It's obvious. A okay. terrible decision. So, so the banks, so the banks are now in, in this financial crisis, which you'll explain to us why they're in it. And the uh, European Central Bank and the IMF have given them what till m this coming Monday to raise a certain amount of capital, or they won't get the big bailout. So, explain all this to us. The crisis in Cyprus is fundamentally a banking crisis. Let's start with that. Okay, the economy is doing very badly, but it's fundamentally a banking crisis. And it's a banking crisis similar to the crisis in Iceland. Uh, Icelandic banks, uh, six years ago, or five, six years ago, were in a similar position. They were huge, they had overexpanded, they were much larger than the economy, and they were bankrupt. Uh, the crisis in uh, Cyprus is also similar to the, to, to the Irish crisis, where the Irish banks were again huge, and they had overexpanded, and they were bankrupt. Um, so this is a banking crisis, but it is within the Eurozone. So uh, Cyprus was presented with um, a so-called solution last week, which was no solution at all. It was told that he had to do two things. It was told that he had, the state had to borrow an enormous amount of money relative to the economy, in order to refinance the banks. He was also told that uh, some more money had to be found, uh, had to be found uh, through, through um, taxing uh, the deposits. In other words, by imposing a levy on the deposits. The combination of these two uh, measures that Cyprus had to take would be simply, um, would destroy the economy. 
taking on the, the debt to rescue the banks would, would make public debt in Cyprus unsustainable. Oh, very large in, in, in any case, and it would impose austerity and everything else uh, on the economy to deal with the public debt. It would basically transform the private debt of the banks into a public debt of the state, and it would ruin the economy uh, in the process. The other part of the equation, which is finding the money by imposing a levy on, um, on bank accounts, would also destroy the banking system. Uh, because, of course, um, depositors would take their money and run, and they would object to, being, to having their money taxed in spite of um, uh, guarantees. The combination of the two was simply deadly. Cyprus couldn't uh, accept it, and it said no. So Now, so, now where, are, yeah. where are we at the moment? Where we are at the moment is, is a terribly difficult position because, and that's something that those who run the European banking system ought to know, bank runs are very dangerous situations that once they begin, once they start, uh, they're becoming almost impossible to, uh, to, to, to reverse. And I'm afraid that Cyprus has reached the stage where a bank run, uh, when the banks reopen, if they reopen, is almost inevitable. That's where we are. And we are there because, as, as I said to you uh, previously, the um, guarantees on deposits have been um, challenged, have been broken, and everybody now knows that Cypriot banks are bankrupt. Well, the first thing that everyone would do whenever the banks open uh, would be to rush to the banks to get their money out. If that happens, the banks are finished. Now, for that not to happen, some new plan has to be put on the table very, very quickly. Very quickly. Um, I don't know what this plan would well, be. Well, one, one of the plans being talked about is the Russian billionaires, that if they really have half the deposits, are going to have a lot to say in whether there's a big bank run or not. Apparently, one of, the, one of the things being put on the table is they're going to have some privileged access to the energy fields off of Cyprus in exchange for not uh, you know, having this bank run, which will be it's like picking the bones of, uh, of what's going to be left of Cyprus. This is what is being... Um mooted, and I believe that some version of that is being negotiated by the Cypriot government or Cypriot representatives in Moscow and elsewhere, uh, even as we speak. Now, I want to point out uh, that this is not a very good path to follow. First of all, because it essentially leaves um, the basic structure of the deal that was offered to, 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 to Cyprus uh, last week uh, unchanged. It hasn't changed uh, as, as an economic policy. The state would still have to take uh, upon itself a huge debt to rescue the banks. Um, and then the rest of the money would come from uh, Russian uh, investors of some sort who uh, will obviously want uh, the pound of flesh. Um, Cyprus would be selling its uh, natural resources uh, at a very low price if, if that were to happen. If I were the, the Cypriot government, I wouldn't want to find myself uh, um, at the mercy of Russian oligarchs uh, right now. Those who have uh, had dealings of this nature know very well that this isn't uh, a very good master or a very good friend. That is not to say that you shouldn't uh, you know, uh, liaise or have uh, business with them necessarily. If you're a state, you must, but um, relying on them uh, isn't uh, a brilliant idea. But be that as it may, the point I'm making is more serious than that. I think we're beginning to get past this point. Um, already there is talk, the latest I've seen in the news right now, is that the Cypriot government has decided to shut down one of the banks, one of the um, uh, weakest banks. Uh, it's just too far gone um, uh, to, 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 to be able to bring back. Um, the, the bank, um, Popular Bank of Cyprus it's called, uh, the bank is basically bankrupt. Um, the money isn't on the table to rescue it. Uh, the depositors know that this is the case. It's nearly impossible to um, to prevent a run on it uh, if it reopens. And I believe that the, the, the Cypriot government has already um, seems to have decided to close it. Uh, this points, to my mind, this points to the way that the whole problem must be resolved. Um, and I'm happy to tell you about this uh, if you ask me. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Cyprus uh, uh, needs to take drastic action and radical action uh, immediately uh, if it wishes to put its economy, uh, to turn its economy around and solve this problem. And it needs to take uh, a leaf from the book of Iceland right now. Iceland confronted a similar problem uh, a few years back. And what it decided to do was to solve it without allowing 
the bank crisis to ruin the economy. In other words, it isolated the problem by allowing the banks to go bankrupt, fundamentally, and not taking on uh, public debt uh, to rescue the banks. This means that Cyprus must um, acknowledge the bankruptcy of its banks. It must shut them down. Uh, it must protect the depositors who put their savings uh, in the banks. Uh, and it must allow large bondholders, shareholders, and large um, deposit holders, uh, Russians or whoever else it is, to take a hit. They must carry um, the can for what has happened. They must, uh, they must receive um, the bulk, uh, most of the shock. And the domestic economy must be protected. It's very, very important that the domestic economy is protected. Uh, small deposit holders and businesses. This means allowing, as I said, as I said before, allowing the banks to go bankrupt and recreating quickly uh, new banks at the public ownership from the ruins of the old banks. Um, that is, it seems to me, the only way in which um, this issue can be resolved uh, without causing wholesale destruction of the economy. Of course, it will be a shock uh, for the economy, but that's the only way. Now, what it means at the macro level is, of course, that Cyprus must not have austerity. It must not go for austerity. Uh, it must go for a different strategy of boosting the local economy um, to, at the very least, uh, counterbalance the shock of contracting the banks. So it must boost the local economy, and it must take whatever action it can uh, to re-energize the productive sector, which is, all, which is very weak, uh, as I mentioned to you previously. Now, can all this happen uh, within the um, Eurozone? Probably not. But that must be the last and the least concern of, of the Cypriot government uh, right now. Its concern must be uh, to, um, not to ruin the economy in order to rescue the banks. Uh, is, there, is, is there any political voice in Cyprus articulating this? At least one with any influence? Unfortunately not. Uh, not that I know. Um, because, again, the left, one more time, is failing to live up to its historic uh, responsibilities. Um, I believe that the, le the left in Cyprus and in Greece is actually arguing very strongly that Cyprus must not accept the um, uh, policy of the um, European Union. And that's correct. That is right. But it's not really articulating uh, a different set of um, uh, steps that the Cypriot government should take, and not in the way that uh, I would like them uh, to do it, which uh, I've outlined to you. Um, but I think I can't see any other way uh, of doing it. Now, it's possible that actually the, the, the right-wing government in Cyprus will go down a path of this type as I mentioned to you previously, they seem to be closing down one of the banks already. Because, quite simply, there is no, no plausible alternative uh, if they wish to avoid uh, destroying the economy altogether. Right. Uh, uh, we shall see how it pans out in the next 48 hours. Now, now the, the uh, European Central Bank and the IMF and, and the German, German Finance Ministry and such, they're all playing kind of a high and mighty, uh, old Cyprus, how you, you got yourself into this, now you're going to have to pay to get yourself out of it. But all the, they all knew this was going on. Have they ever said that Cyprus shouldn't be doing that, playing this kind of game? I, I wish to state in the strongest possible terms that the way the Troika of the European Central Bank, the European Union and the IMF have behaved over this is amateurish and absolutely I mean, arrogant and how to describe um, the content of it, uh, because, of course, they knew what was happening. And Cyprus isn't the only country which engages in practices of this type. As I mentioned to you previously, Luxembourg isn't a million miles away. The city of London isn't uh, exactly spotless when it comes to these things. Uh, these are well-known um, uh, instances and occasions of uh, you know, shady dealings w with banks and bank deposits. They chose to make an example of Cyprus. Uh, and they chose to teach it a lesson for whatever, uh, for whatever reason they had uh, in their heads. Uh, they offered it a deal last um, week, which was manifestly unmanageable, and they're insisting on it. They're taking a very hard line. Uh, in other words, they seem to be um, destroying the economy. Uh, and they seem to be giving Cyprus a choice, which it cannot have. They, they seem to be... They, they're treating it like an insignificant uh, little member of this... Uh, monetary union. In other words, they're telling us and telling the, the Cypriots this isn't a monetary union at all. 
This and is of, a hierarchical alliance. And of course, it's going to force Cyprus into a situation of selling off publicly owned assets, which is another n nice little privatization of feast. Course, of course. But if I may say something on the European Central Bank, because uh, uh, it's one of the ma main players, it is hard to think of a central bank that has behaved uh, more irresponsibly. And I say this because they pride themselves in um, conservatism and uh, being sensible and so on. First of all, they agreed, they accepted uh, a deal last week which basically told the Cypriots uh, that they had to um, tax deposits in spite of uh, the guarantee. Now, it's hard to believe that central bank has agreed to a deal like that because, of course, this was very likely to create a bank run, and it, yes, it has created a bank run. So this is a bank run created by the ECB. It, it is hard to believe that the central bank has done that. On top of it, the ECB came out today and basically gave to the Cypriots uh, a complete ultimatum. It told them that they've got liquidity for their banks until next Monday. Therefore, they've got to find the uh, solution by Tuesday morning. Now, this was guaranteed to compound the, um, the pressure of a bank run because, of course, depositors um, will not believe that banks are secure, will not believe that ba banks uh, are okay. When the banks reopen on Tuesday, if they reopen on Tuesday, you're likely to see chaotic scenes. Uh, and that would have been created by the, and, and aided and abetted by the Central Bank uh, of Europe. Well, we'll see whether this, uh, in the end, winds up giving these Russian billionaires big pieces of, of Cypri Cypriot energy, or perhaps some of the Russian billionaires get screwed in the course of all this. That's also possible. It is indeed possible. This is hanging in the balance at the moment. We don't know which way it's going to go. Uh, if the Russian billionaire, billionaires get uh, pieces of Cypriot real estate, uh, Cypriot resources, and they force um, the Cypriot population to um, undertake austerity uh, and, 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 and placate the Russians in order to stay in this uh, monetary union, that would be a terrible outcome. Uh, if, on the other hand, um, the situation has gone too far for that, we might well see uh, events unfolding such that the Russian billionaires will take a significant hit uh, and Cyprus will go down a different path. Whichever way it goes, it's clear that the people who run the monetary union and who run Europe um, are beginning to lose sense of what's happening. They live in their own bubble in Brussels. They don't quite understand uh, what this crisis is doing to the um, peoples of the periphery, the peoples of the south, and they are behaving like uh, emperors, basically, cut off uh, from the population. These are typical signs um, that we see of political regimes before a fall. Um, this is not a monetary union that is going anywhere. This is, um, if you look at it historically, this clearly is the end game. All right, thanks for joining us, Costa. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on the Real News Network.